It has been six years since Modern Warfare 3 came out, and from what I remember, Modern Warfare 3 managed to both innovate the Call of Duty franchise and stay true to what made the Modern Warfare trilogy special. But how does this game hold up in 2018? Is this game still active? Do people even play this game still? While Call of Duty World War II may be the main Call of Duty game that people play today, maybe we can go back and appreciate the era of older Call of Duty games and look back to the Call of Duty that people played back in 2011. My name is Elijah and I am here with Luke and today on Rocket Sloth we are taking a look back at Modern Warfare 3. Let's get into it. And before we start this video, if you want to play some Modern Warfare 3 with us or some other Call of Duty game, consider checking out our Discord, link in the description, because we have a little community of people who love to play Call of Duty games and it's always a good thing to plug it every now and again. Let's start off with looking at the campaign first. This story picks up more or less immediately after the events of Modern Warfare 2, and Infinity Ward did an outstanding job at increasing the stakes here, while also developing an interesting and realistic story that works. And since this game goes full on World War 3, there's some really good writing here that makes sense as to why all these countries would get involved. Besides following our heroes from Modern Warfare 2, we also follow a group of American soldiers who fight through some memorable locations like New York. Of course, the core of the story still follows Task Force 141, immediately after the events of Modern Warfare 2. But, spoiler alert, they come back and team up with our American soldiers in the final act which leads for a fulfilling and well-rounded story. There are some elements of struggle, heartbreak and quite a few wow moments. And the ending of the game definitely leaves players feeling satisfied, but didn't really have a huge plot twist moment like Modern Warfare 2 did. Modern Warfare 3 really does an outstanding job at taking the story from the previous two Modern Warfare games and and give some sense of a conclusion to the ongoing story that had been developing, while continuing to expand on the dialogue that we saw in Modern Warfare 2 and the social commentary on war that we saw in the previous Modern Warfare games. Sure, there are some moments of the game where the story doesn't feel like it's pushing the envelope that Modern Warfare 2 so carefully sealed, and some moments feel somewhat forced, just for the sake of one-upping Modern Warfare 2, but at the same time nothing feels out of place and the pacing feels just right where this game does the Modern Warfare trilogy justice and that's what they set out to do here. And they also made some key references to the previous games in the trilogy that a player who's played Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare and Modern Warfare 2 will really appreciate, as I know I appreciated them being a more dedicated Call of Duty fan. Shifting gears to the multiplayer aspect of the game, Modern Warfare 3 does a pretty good job at staying true to the Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer that everyone got hooked on, but also tries to refine certain aspects of the multiplayer that sometimes felt unbalanced. Explosions don't do as much damage, which discourages people from abusing them, some of the guns have been toned down a little bit, and some new guns were introduced that mixed the style of gameplay a bit around. The killstreak system in Modern Warfare 3 is pulled back a little bit to stop some from being overpowered, and avoid the general frustration that sometimes came with it in Modern Warfare 2, but at the same time expands on adding different styles to killstreak chaining that allows for killstreaks to be more accessible to all types of players. A new player might try running a support class, which rewards players for overall kills instead of chaining kills together. Or a solo player may want to chain more perks together to favor their gameplay. Of course the standard killstreak system is still intact, but in general the killstreaks aren't nearly as powerful as they were in Modern Warfare 2. While this game aims to stay true to the success that Modern Warfare 2 had, this game just doesn't quite shake the identity that Modern Warfare 2 had developed, and that could be taken as either a positive or a negative thing. On one end, it's really nice that this game feels very familiar to a Modern Warfare 2 player, as players can make classes almost with familiarity as to what they can expect from the gameplay experiences in the game just off of their experiences from the previous game. But at the same time, this game feels a lot like Modern Warfare 2 and doesn't really create a unique experience. The game probably is the most similar to its predecessor that we have seen in the Call of Duty franchise to date, where this game really feels like a Modern Warfare 2.5 more than a Modern Warfare 3. And now that that criticism is out of the way, we can actually appreciate what this game does well here for what it is. 
for Modern Warfare 2 and a half, it's still a really fun game to play. The gameplay is classic Call of Duty and this was the perfect era where Activision didn't over-innovate where it caused some sort of mess, which we have seen a lot of in the recent years of Call of Duty. Sure, some people complained that this game didn't do a whole lot of new things, but considering what became of Call of Duty later, I'll happily play this game over, say, Infinite Warfare. The map design is really nice here, bringing back a few favorites like Terminal and adding a fun variety in map design. Sure, there's one or two maps I didn't care for, like Mission, but this game comes with a lot of maps once you purchase it, especially since a few of the maps were free DLC. In total, if you buy this game and download all of the free DLC, if you're on PC it's just included, you're walking away with 19 maps, which is the most in any base Call of Duty game, and that really keeps the gameplay feeling fresh and adds a lot of variety to this game that you might not see in an older Call of Duty game. And maybe you guys can understand why I got so mad that Call of Duty World War II only had 9 maps at launch and the rest of the maps having to be a paid content. Playing this game in 2018, however, is a rougher experience than we would have liked to. On the PC, for some reason, a lot of games are hacked, much, much more than we experienced in our combined 100 plus hours on Modern Warfare 2. And that was really disappointing. It's not that everyone is hacking in every game, but since this game has such a small player base, sitting around 1500 people on a weeknight, you can't really find alternative servers to avoid hackers without having to change game types. On the Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 3, there is a similar to less amount of players playing the game at any given time. We noticed less hackers overall, but since the game isn't backwards compatible on the Xbox One like other Call of Duty games are, the accessibility of the game isn't really the best. At least this game had some fun other game types, like the introduction of Infection in multiplayer, and I spent a lot of time playing that. Besides multiplayer, Spec Ops makes its fantastic return in a new way and it's alright here. It's not bad, it's fun and challenging and great to do in co-op, but it doesn't really do anything too different from what Modern Warfare 2 had to offer, and since we had the addicting gameplay of zombie mode in Black Ops after Modern Warfare 2, playing Spec Ops in Modern Warfare 3 felt lackluster in comparison to the features that the previous two Call of Duties had. Modern Warfare 3 Spec Ops is nowhere better than Modern Warfare 2's, but it's still fun to tune in and play every now and again. Overall, Modern Warfare 3 was one of the last true Call of Duty games that captured the feeling of what Call of Duty really is, besides maybe Black Ops 2 which came out a year later. If you can get this game for under 10 bucks, which you easily can at a GameStop or a key site like G2A, there's no reason not to pick up this game. You'll have fun playing this game again or playing it for the first time. Either way, it's definitely worth just picking up if you're on the fence on that. We're gonna go ahead and give this game a solid 7.5 out of 10 across the board for all consoles. You'll have a pretty fun time playing this game despite the low player counts, but you might want to consider picking up another Call of Duty that has some extra features to have a more varied experience. That is all for today's video, but if you want to check out our other videos on this channel, we have reviewed Modern Warfare 2 and Black Ops and plan on doing more in the future. In fact, you can go to rocketsloft.net right now, become a member of the Rocket Squad today and vote for the next Call of Duty we should review in our years later series, while also getting exclusive content and supporting the videos we make. And most importantly, don't forget to subscribe to Rocketsloft. Thanks for watching.